Hello and welcome to the second session of our 3D printing workshop here at SimScale. Today we will discuss about the vibrations of the frame, about mechanical vibrations and how we can reduce them by using simulation. This is, as I mentioned, uh, the second out of three sessions and therefore we will have our final session on uh, next week, the same date, the same time. Yes, let's first take a look at our agenda. First of all, I would like to review the past session together with you to discuss the homework. Then we will have a, a crisp introduction to the fundamentals of mechanical vibrations. So we will uh, um, discuss about what vibrations actually are and how we can simulate them. Later on, we will together set up a, a, a harmonic uh, of frequency analyzers and uh, interpret the results. And finally, I will present your next homework assignment to you. My name is Milad. You may know me from the last session or some of our other webinars in the past. I'm working here at SimScale as a marketing program manager, so therefore one part of my work is to make sure that new users and enthusiasts get as fast as possible used to our simulation platform. And I have a mechanical engineering background with uh, more than 10 years experience in engineering simulation. Let's again talk about what this workshop is about, just to make sure that everybody is, is exactly uh, uh, knows what we will do today. The idea of this workshop is really to, to give first insights about the application of engineering simulation to, to interest the people from the field of 3D printing. And we really try to give you some first hands-on experience how to use simulation in general and how to use SimScale to optimize your product ideas and your designs. Um, on the other hand, we cannot provide you with a detailed training about simulation theory, for example. If you're more interested in the fundamentals than in the application, uh, you should, um, maybe if you're a student, uh, the, I'm quite sure that university is offering lessons about this, and there are also some very good blogs and books about the fundamentals of, of simulation theory. And also, if you are more interested in a, in a general application of simulation uh, and how to use it in, in commercial design projects, uh, then I would recommend you to, to, to um, take part at our um, free, uh, our professional training. And the good thing is, if you submit all your three homeworks, you can get a free professional training uh, with a value of 500 euros. And just because People ask me every time why we're offering such workshops. The reason is that we really think simulation is, is a tool every engineer should, should know and use. And therefore, we want just to introduce, on the one hand, engineers and designers to simulation at some scale. On the other hand, we would for sure appreciate to get product feedback from you or some contributions to our simulation library. Yes. Um, like last time, we will today have a one hour online session with live demo. You will have the optional homework assignment, uh, which you can use to get a certification and to win the professional training. And well, uh, once you've done your homework, please share it using the, the, the form we provide you with. And there are a lot of questions also which are asked every time, for example, if this session will be recorded. And yes, we will record it and provide you with the record. And where you can get a spot, for example, is also something people ask me. And if you need help, just go on simscale.com and our forum. I can just show it to you on simscaleforum.simscale.com. And here we have a, if you switch to categories, we have a dedicated category just for the 3D printer workshop where you can ask your question and get instant support. Right, then. Let's take a look at, at the, uh, the last session. Um, you may remember last week we talked about um, some fundamentals about 3D printing, how a rewrap 3D printer is basically working. And we talked about one of the, let's say, most central processes, the process of melting the, the um, plastic wire uh, in the extruder to, to use it for print. And this extruder, you can see the, the, uh, such a simplified extruder assembly here on the left side, is basically made out of a cooling body, a nozzle, a heating block, and a nut, which is connecting everything. And um, 
it's very challenging to design such a um, extruder and to operate it because um, the way you you're bringing heat inside is that you have this heat ring, this heat block, and there you have two holes inside. And in one hole you put a resistor which becomes hot, and on the other hand you put a, a, a thermal thermal sensor. And then you're trying to adjust the right temperature in the end, just by measure, measuring uh, uh, the temperature, let's say here. And in the end, your aim is to have a, a dedicated special temperature here at the inl inlet of the nozzle because you want exactly here the plastic to be melted and not before. And at in the end, we discussed and or I showed you how you can use thermal simulations to investigate how the heat is distributed through this assembly and to, um, to optimize it. And so for your homework was to first create a tetrahedral mesh, which is needed as a uh, uh, to create a simulation. And then to set up simulations for four different resistor temperatures. And here in the table, you can just see um, some um, results I've prepared. And uh, I also uh, took, take, uh, took a look at the exact temperature where the sensor is. And here you can see that the difference, the absolute uh, difference in temperature, is quite constant. It's between two and three deg uh, degrees or Kelvin, and relatively it's also quite the same. And this is, for example, a very good information for us because this means that, um, let's say, the, the error we have between the real temperature and the temperature we're measuring is quite constant and independent from the, from the inlet temperature, let's say. You can also see some visualizations. This is a cut through the assembly, and uh, the color uh, represents the temperature. So blue is dark, blue is very cold, red is hot, uh, and then it gets from red to 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 yellow to green to blue to to light blue to dark blue, and we have the same uh, scale everywhere for all four images. So, um, and what we can see basically are two things: that independent from the temperature again, we have uh, this this nice uh, distribution of temperature which we talked about. That you have exactly at the let's say at beginning of the nozzle, you have this high temperature you need and around it in the ring. And uh, if you go up to the cooling body, there it's it's very, very cold there. And this is exactly what we want to have. Great, then now let's take a look into the future and talk about mechanical vibration, which will be our topic today. And first of all, I'm quite sure that everybody, every one of you at least knows or is doing one thing which is related to to mechanical vibration. You maybe don't know, even don't know it. Just an example is if you have such a pendulum clock. In the end, your pendulum, which is a mass, is oscillating from left to right, and this is, in the end, the way how time is measured. And this is a mechanical vibration, and it's even a periodical vibration with a frequency of one hertz, I would think. Then we have, for example, this carousel here. And if we ride it, in the end, it's also like it's 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 like a pendulum. So it's also, in the end, application of of vibrations or oscillation. And if we take a look at this guitar, we want to play it, and what we are doing in the end, uh, uh, we are uh, bringing vibrations to the string, and these vibrations are transferred then into sound. And when we're talking about vibrations and engineering, there can be a lot of different applications. In in manufacturing, mainly vibrations are a big problem. Just think about a milling machine, a CNC milling machine. When you have vibrations, your precision gets down. And the same problem you have also with 3D printers. And why, uh, we will discuss it just in some minutes. And basically, there are two kinds of analyzers types we're supporting on SimScale for, for, for such vibration analyzers. First of one is the frequency analyzers. And the frequency analyzers, it's, it's a little bit abstract to understand it, but the idea is basically every body, and that's uh, physics, every body has own eigenfrequencies and eigenmodes. And these eigenfrequencies are these frequencies which will uh, uh, result in a so-called resonance state. So that if you, for example, uh, do you know maybe this video of this bridge 100 years ago where the soldiers were walking over the bridge, and because they exactly hit the eigenfrequency of the bridge with the way they were walking, the bridge uh, just crashed. 
And this is a very vivid example of eigenfrequencies. But this frequency analysis just says where are these eigenfrequencies, because they are only depending from the material and the design, but not from the load. And when you have these eigenfrequencies, then you use them to investigate the response of your system to a, a special uh, uh, force, for example, periodical force at eigenfrequency of your body. And then you get by a harmonic analysis back the physical reaction of your Yes, of your product, of your design, of your part. And if we take now a look at our printer, here we have this manual rewrap printer. Basically, this printer is made out of a frame, and you know this is a good thing about the printer. This rods are standard parts; you can buy them everywhere, and these black parts are just printed, and you can print them with a. Uh, so this, that's why the printer can reproduce itself. And if we would now take a look at the um, chassis, let's say, then we have this, this main chassis here. And inside this main chassis, there is this support chassis for, for the uh, Z-axis, or for the axis in general. And um, now you can imagine these red boxes here, these are the stepping engines, stepping motors. And they are controlling, in the end, or moving the printer or the extruder so that you can uh, uh, really print something. And now the problem is, or the problem, the stepping engines, or stepper and motors, as the name says, they are stepping. So they have, uh, they are not really moving continuously, but they are moving really step by step. And this is in the end also a kind of vibration, which is transferred then to the chassis. And now the question is, if it's possible maybe, that uh, the frequency that uh, some of the eigenfrequencies of the chassis are similar with the frequency of the fre frequency band uh, the end step engines are using. And if that's the case, that can create a lot of problems. Just imagine you you have this 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 resonance case, and then uh, it starts to vibrate uh, faster and faster, stronger and stronger, and that will really destroy your printing quality. And what we will do today later on, we will just investigate one part of this frame, which you can see on the left right side. And first of all, we'll do frequency analysis of this part and use then the frequencies to make a harmonic analysis based on um, forces, uh, which we assume for, uh, for, for standard printing operations. Okay, and here you can see how we will, uh, how the um, simulation setup should look like basically. And um, in the end, the printer is, the the, the uh, here at the bottom, the at the bottom face, the, the these faces are cannot really move. They can just move in x and y direction, but not in z direction, not up and down. And here, where we have the holes in uh, in the full assembly, we have the other rods here, and therefore this is also somehow fixed, uh, but not up and down. This is fixed in all directions, and these are in the end our later boundary conditions we need. Another thing, I mean, if you remember last session, there we had also boundary conditions, but we also had contacts, which we have to find. And again, contact sounds very complex, but in the end, it's just a little bit thinking. Um, again, the idea of contact is if you have a, a finite element simulation of a um, multi of assembly with several bo solid bodies, then our simulation code does not know how they are interacting. And you have to define contact to make sure that the interaction between the part is considered into your simulation. For example, without the contact, it could happen that parts are intersecting, which is physically not possible. And now we have to define the contacts here. What you can see, first of all, if we zoom in, and this assembly is, or the way this assembly is made is that you have these rods, which are standard parts, like the nuts and the washers here. And then you use the washer and the nuts to to fix to connect them with the 3D printed parts. And first of all, I've used all metal parts, all parts out of steel or of iron to one solid to make my simulation easier because otherwise I also had to define contacts between the nuts and the washers and so on. And when it now comes to defining the essential contacts, we just have to take a look and then it will become clear. First of all, or in what you should remember first of all is that you need everywhere contacts where faces are touching and they can move relative to each other. 
and and it also transfers forces from one from one to each uh, to another. And then first of all, I would say we have here a contact because here the inner retrospective, the outer surface, are touching, and the same on the other side. And if you just think you would, let's say, fix it here, then it's nearly fixed, but what is still missing is the interaction between the washer and the rest. And therefore, we need a third contact. And these are all three contacts, the only three contacts we need. We have to fix the uh, rod into this plastic part, and we have to fix the washers on this plastic part. And that's it. And we have to do this three contacts for all connectors. So we have three connectors. So at least we have nine contacts, or we need nine contacts. OK, then I would say we can just jump into the live demonstration. Just again, just uh, uh, let's roughly discuss the process. We will upload a CAD model or import a CAD model. Then you have to create a mesh. The mesh is necessary. It's 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 like it's called mesh because, as you know, you are creating a kind of of mesh truck. So you are dividing your geometry into small tetraedes. And the reason why we have to do this is that other uh, this meshing is equivalent to to the accuracy of simulation. And by making the mesh locally fine or coarse, you can control this accuracy. And finally, we'll do the simulation setup and analyze the results. Well, then let's switch now to the SimScale platform. I've just opened several uh, tabs. And um, yes, let's, let's start. Um, first of all, I will open this project. This project link will later on also send to you. And it's including, it includes the geometry of the, the um, part of the chart we want to investigate. And yes, you can for sure also theoretically update, uh, upload your own CAD model using this button, this upload geometry um, um, menu. But we will now um, yes mesh this as the first step. And um, what you can see, um, we have uh, this model is made out of six different solid bodies. We have three solids, including the, the, the rods and with the nuts and the washers, and one solid per each uh, plastic connector. And first of all, what we can check if we take a look at this model here is, uh, for example, the bounding box length, which is nearly a half meter. And that is just a good indicator for us that conversion worked at this in the right scale. Yeah, now let's create the mesh. Click the Create Mesh button to create a new mesh project. Then select the, the base, so the geometry you want to use or which you want to mesh. In this case, we only have one geometry, so save. Then uh, this model will also be associated with this matching job, and you can see it's in also here in this 3D uh, menu. Now we have to add the mesh operation, and we will again use the fully automatic tetralization and use the same settings like last time. So we will do it first order, uh, since first order meshes are um, less less um, memory consuming, and we don't need a second order mesh mesh for this easy simulation later on. We will make a moderate mesh from the finest level and use for processors. Just save, press the start button, and then you go and the mesh will be generated in the next 10 minutes. To save a little bit uh, of your time, I've already prepared uh, uh, another project, including this finished mesh. So it's the same geometry, the same settings. I just started the meshing process earlier. And yes, the final mesh will look like this. And as you know from the last time, this mesh is intelligent, so it's automatically refining the mesh in the near of, of, of small faces and edges. And again, we have six sub-volumes of elements in this mesh. So this is exactly like last time for every solid there is a own element group. OK, let's do the quick wrap up. I just showed you how to upload a CAD model, uh, or in this case, how to open and import a project. Then we performed automatic t dreidel meshing with with uh, the parameter uh, f f for fineness of three, which is moderate, and a first order mesh. And that one topic here would be everything related to manual mesh setup. For example, you could uh, theoretically choose instead of this um, automatic operation, you could also do manual operation with 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 refinements. Um, another thing we did not cover here, which would be advanced, is cat cleaning and preparation, which was here again uh, some work 
uh, I mean, this, uh, separating this part out of the whole full assembly and fuse the nuts uh, and the washers to the um, rod. And also mesh quality assessment. As I mentioned, um, meshing is not only about doing the mesh or dividing, it's also about quality of the mesh. So there are specific criteria how the mesh should look like from a structure. And this is something which is can become a problem for very complex geometries and very complex simulation. In this case, not necessary. By the way, you get also a kind of feedback and everything has worked right in this mesh operation. Okay, next step then is to set up the actual simulation. We will therefore switch to the simulation designer. Create a new simulation by clicking this button here, new simulation. You can uh, identify it by this plus sign. And then we are guided to this menu where we can choose what kind of simulation we want to perform. In this case, it's a solid mechanics simulation and it's a frequency analyzer. And there are no sub options, so we can just click on save. Then SimScale will build up this tree and going through this tree will help us uh, to set up the simulation. So we are guided through the simulation. Everywhere you see this red bubble, it means that there is something which is mandatory is missing. For example, the mesh. We will use only mesh we have. Now it becomes also green. Next thing is not red, but it's uh, very also very important. It's called contacts. It came just new, this part of the tree. And as I discussed, or as we discussed, we need contacts. And there are two opportunities. You could also first create this face groups entity sets and then create the contacts out, for, out of them. Um, this is uh, maybe a little bit more comfortable if you want to do a lot of changes later on, but since you want to make it faster and very easy, we'll do it directly. And it will now just do three contacts for uh, so do contacts from one of this around one of these these plastic connectors um, to show you how it's working pr uh, from pr uh, from principle. So let's start with add a new contact, and we will now focus on only on, on this connector, this is body of three, so we can turn out the, off the other ones and we can also turn off this one. Okay, and let's start with this contact. Let's, talk, let's call it contact three for body three and zero for the so number for the first um, contact. So we count zero, one, two, that's the engineering thing. <laughs> and yes, as you see, contact zero, is between the cylindr cylindrical face of the rod and the hole of, of the um, connector. One is the same thing on the other side and yellow is connecting uh, the washers or con the connect between the washers and the connector, the plastic connector. Then let's switch back and start. And now a lot of people asked me last time, where do I knew, know uh, if a face is master or, or slave? And for this, there are no very complete static rules. And it's not like that sometimes it's even makes no difference. But in general, you should make the master, you should choose this, the faces for master, which are moving the less and which are bigger. And in this case, therefore, we will use as a master the in general, the connectors, and as a slaves, the other parts which are connected. So let's start. And the easiest thing is for the first contact to define it. And we will now pick that faces here, which is our master first, or just lost the name, contact three, zero, and the corresponding slave faces are these two. Select them here. Great, and we can save it now. This is exactly the same thing with the next contact. Contact three, one, our master faces are this one and for the slave we have these two faces. And then finally maybe the most complex contact of all. And here we need now Everything. So the master surfaces. We're talking now about the washers with this connector. So if you want to take a look again about this contact to this yellow one, this is all the master faces. 
and um, we have also here the slave faces and now save we will need at least nine contacts so three against three contacts for the other two connectors but since that will just take a lot of time it's exactly the same procedure i will just skip this um, next thing we have to do is to define add materials so we can just take steel of a library for all parts which are from metal so this through bodies and oh my fault first select then add then save and we have to assign the material to these connectors which are printed out of ABA plastic so let's call it ABS Add the correct material properties. Don't forget you will get a step-by-step -step tutorial later on where you get all these numbers and then select the three parts. Great, and now the only thing which is missing or is, or which are missing are boundary conditions. And that's again therefore skip back in the slides. We have a fixation in one direction and that direction for the foods here. And we have a fixation all directions for the six holes. So let's start. Change selection mode faces first. Add the new one. And select these two faces here. And just call it maybe floor. And we want to only to prescribe that direction. And this is done now. Let's do the same for the other rods or the holes. And here everything is fixed. And we have to select them all now. Okay, here we go. Great. And this is done. Yeah, so now finally we don't have to change any numerics, we don't have any preload, and now we have just to do the simulation uh, control. And we have here, this is okay, the maximum runtime and the number of computing cores. And then we have to say how many ion frequencies want to be calculated, let's say 20 for example. And we have to define the lower and the upper frequ uh, uh, frequency limit, which is investigate. So we will now only investigate the first 20 ion frequencies which are in this range. And 0 to 100,000 is too much. We have just calculated for a standard step engine for, for, for the all operating modes, it should be between 1,000 and 10,000 hertz. Great. Now there's nothing to do. We can just check the simulation. We'll get a warning. It's not. It's more warning, it's not critical, just saying that the solver we're using is not completely working in parallel. Then we can create a new run and start the simulation, which I will not do right now since contacts are missing. But if you would add the missing contacts, you what we can just do right now, or we will not do it, but if you add the contact and start the simulation run, then you get a result which I've prepared. And the result will look like this. Let's open it. And maybe first of all, yes, if you then you have added all contacts, and then when your simulation is finished, you get a notification. Okay, let's just do a quick wrap up. Uh, I showed you how to, or I explained again what topological set, entity sets are. I showed you how to define the three types of contacts you need for the simulation. We defined together the material for this. We imported one material model for steel out of the material library and created a new material model ourselves using the material properties of ABS. And then we assigned the boundary conditions for the fixation and adapted our solver settings. 
Right, and once when this is done successfully, you can switch to post processor, and then you can check out 3.6. In, in contrast to our thermal simulation, we are working more with, with numbers here on tables. So you can, for example, get, first of all, inside what are the eigenfrequencies and what are of your, of your, of your, of this chassis. So we have a table here, and you can see uh, here I've calculated 51. And you can see them here, and you can also have a plot, and you see these are all frequencies which will be critical for five, like 5,233 hertz or 4,800 hertz. And between this, like here, it would be better. And you can also take a look at the, the let's say, eigen, how the eigen modes would look like of these, this, this resonance states. So for this, you can just change displacement, the visualization displacement. And then, for example, this is uh, the, at the first eigen mode. So we will have a, a big vibration, so big, big displacement here in this red and orange area. And in contrast to that, at the last eigen mode, it's completely different. It's more on the feet. Okay, great. Then to wrap this up, um, Yes, I showed you just how to access the results. It's going to be a little bit confusing that it's not so visual as the other ones we did, but this is, as you know, just the input for the later analysis. And then I would like to discuss the homework with you. So your homework will be for this week to create the frequency analysis from scratch. You will therefore be provided with this uh, project including the models and a step-by-step -step instruction. It's exactly the same procedure like I showed you right now. And then you are asked on this next level to create a harmonic analysis based on these results. How the the mesh, you can reuse the mesh for this, so you don't have to create a new mesh. And you have just to adapt some small things. And we will also provide for this a step-by-step -step, um, instruction. Okay, great, guys. Thank you very much for your time. It was a big pleasure. And yes, uh, right after that, we have time for some questions. And yes, thank you very much. Also for your homework submission so far. Have a nice weekend. and. Yes, hope to see you next week. Bye.